Hello gang, Pastor Jerry here. Good morning, good happy Monday morning. And um, just wanted to say hello. We are officially back. My wife and, and my family and I were back. Pastor Tony's back. Uh, it was good seeing everyone in church and also online. And so it's just a blessing to be able to be with you guys again. Um, and so we have a lot going on this week and a lot going on moving into our next phase of our church because this is a like I've been saying for the past few months this is a new dispensation I feel for the body of Christ and also the body of ELC and so just some quick updates uh, I want to thank everyone who allowed us to go out of town for two weeks and I keep saying that because it's a big big deal because a lot of pastors can't do that and there was a season in our church that we couldn't do that either because every time we would leave we'd come back and there's drama and it was such a blessing. It's so peaceful. So thank all of you all who played an integral part uh, in church, online, answering phones, um, taking care of issues. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart, my wife's heart, uh, our kids' hearts. Uh, uh, just thank you so much. So just want to give a, a shout out and just a thankfulness for that right there. Also, our tithes and offerings have been outstanding. So whatever you're doing with God, keep it up. Uh, and that, again, continually shows that your heart is with God and also your heart is with ELC. And you're going forward with the vision of this house. Um, also, keep in mind that we have our life groups going every Monday night. Uh, TJ uh, and Tasha Steverson and also Adele, they're sharing uh, leadership in one of our life groups. And then um, I think on Wednesday nights, um, I think, yeah, we, yes, yes, Wednesday nights, you have Pastor Blaine and his wife, Lynn, and they're also leading a life group. And then this week, this Tuesday, is our last Invincible Men's Life Group. And then we also have our Young Adult Life Group that's every Sunday night at 7 o'clock. And so just keep that in mind. Even though uh, we're still, we have a lot of people who are still staying home, and that's completely fine, um, you can go online. So don't don't neglect that gathering part. Don't get too busy. Don't think you don't need it. You do need it. Um, we missed it while we were gone for two weeks. And so just, just keep that in mind. Uh, you do need to be a part of this body or a body uh, so they can keep getting fed and keep maturing as a uh, growing Christian. Also, um, I think where I was going to go then. Yes. So um, just keep that in mind. Also, tomorrow night, for all you ladies, my wife will be having her I Declare War event, and it'll be in service or in person and also online. If you want to be online, awesome. Watch it online. It starts at 7 o'clock. Um, it'll be awesome. Uh, if you want to come in and be a part of it, um, you can uh, come in as you are, and um, uh, we'll have open seating, no registration needed, and just come on in. It's at 7 o'clock. Be here early. And so, and my wife has got some great things planned for that. And there also is a lot of stuff going on for our women too over the next few weeks that's coming up too. So go online for that, uh, or you can call uh, Shauna, uh, or, or you can call Rebecca. Uh, and I, I can't think of who else you can call. You may be able to also call Diana. So, um, but anyway, just keep that going. Uh, understand that too. Now for the big news, um, my wife and I have been praying for about a month about how to do this and uh, what our next phase is because the Lord told me some specific things when COVID hit. He says, Jerry, don't reopen too fast. Um, when you do reopen, um, go slowly. And um, those are the main two things he told me. And so as we were gone this week or the past two weeks, and even before I left, he's been really talking to me. He's real strong um, and also my wife. And so right now, um, and I think moving forward, uh, we're going to be moving into our next phase of our slow reopening to regular services. So as of this Sunday, we're going back to our pre-COVID service sessions. What does that mean? Well, that means no more needing to register to sign up to come to church. You come as you are. Um, we have open seating now, so don't worry about coming or don't worry about registering for service. Just go ahead and come. And, uh, and just know that it's, it's open seating. Um, you can still wear masks. You can still not wear masks. Um, you can um, use hand sanitizer. You can use gloves. But right now, we feel that it's important to open church, to um, get the gathering going again, um, and to obey God and to keep moving forward. Again, 
If you don't feel like coming to church right now, please don't come. Please stay home. Um, please keep watching online. Please keep being involved in our life groups. Please keep praying for us. Um, but we are excited about moving forward into this next phase. So here's some uh, reasons why we're going to be moving forward. And um, I've been praying about this. And so um, we prayed. And, and number one, um, th we've been having uh, in-person services for about two months now. And there have been not one documented case of COVID from our church. Not one. Not not one. On top of that, too, um, we've had some uh, partners who have gotten sick from COVID, uh, not and from their workplace, from wherever they may be, but not from ELC that we can document. Number two, um, we're pretty strict here as far as what we want to happen here at ELC as far as making sure you wash your hands, making sure that you don't come in contact with anyone who's, who's wearing a heart on their shirt. We are maintaining that. And then also, too, we believe that God is our healer. He is our protector. Um, he is the one that, that causes us to be healthy. Um, I have people in my family personally who have gotten the, the COVID-19, uh, one in particular, and they have been gloved up, masked up, PPP'd up since it started, and they still got covid um, there are people who have not been uh, gloved up, masked up, and they've gotten COVID. So, and, and it doesn't mean that if you get the, 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 the sickness that you're not walking in faith. I believe that if you get the sickness, uh, you'll be healed instantly in Jesus' name. And so um, that's our rationale behind it. Also, too, we've had partners in the church who've gotten COVID. We've prayed over them, and they're all healed now. Praise God. Hallelujah. So just keep that in mind. So this is why we're also moving forward. But the main thing that keeps, I guess, uh, pricking my soul and my heart is that I cannot get away from God's word. Uh, God's word is clear. <clears throat> and even when you are walking in a, a small amount of fear, uh, anxiety, anxiousness, you've got to depend on God's word. And this is what God, his word says. Hebrews 10, 24 says this. And let us consider and give attention, continuous care to watching over one another, studying how we may stir up, stimulate, and incite to love and help deeds and noble activities, not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together as believers and as is the habit of some people, but admonishing, warning, urging, and encouraging one another and all the more faithfully as you see the day approaching. Um, and so, I cannot get away from the fact that God wants us to gather together as a body. And it's hard to be effective when you have the ear over here, uh, the foot over here, the eye over here, um, the kneecap over here. When we come together as a body, there is power, there is authority, there, there is unity. And the Bible says that where there's unity, he commands the blessing. And yes, we can have unity with some online and some in person, but it's even more gooder when we're all together. And again, I'm not saying that if you're not coming to church, you're not in unity. What I'm saying is as you come to church, there is more of a connection there with other people. Um, and there definitely is power. We were gone for two weeks and I did not realize how much power there is when you come back. When I came back and I got into worship, my gosh, it was different. It was just different. And so, and we even watched online and, and it was a, a considerable difference as far as as the feeling and the anointing and the power that that I felt when I got back to church in person yesterday. Um, so with that in mind, we're going to be moving forward uh, from from as of this Sunday. So no more registrations. Uh, we're not going to have kids church yet. We're going to wait on that. Uh, you're welcome to bring your kids to church with you. Um, and I and I love that. I love the fact that our kids can be in service watching their parents worship and learning how to worship from their parents. And again, if you still want to wear a mask in church, that is fine with me. Wear gloves, fine. Um, but if you have that urge, that inkling to come, go ahead and come, wear a mask, uh, wear gloves, and we'll keep our distance from you guys. Um, but uh, I, I want us to move forward. Now, I got to say this too. For those of you all who think I'm, um, I'm not abiding by Romans 13, obeying the government, I want us to understand something. Um, when um, so, let me put this in a Holy Ghost way. 
Acts 5, and I'm going to read Acts 5 right now. It says, uh, Acts 5, 25 says this. It says, Then someone arrived with startling news. The men you put in jail are standing in the temple teaching the people. The captain went with his temple guards and arrested the apostles who without violence, for they were afraid the people would stone them. Then they brought the apostles before the high council where the high priest confronted them. And he says to them, we gave you strict orders never again to teach in this man's name. He said, instead, you have filled all Jerusalem with your teaching about him. And you want to make us responsible for his death, meaning Jesus' death. But Peter and the apostles replied, now watch this. We must obey God rather than any human authority. And I, as your pastor, am, am accountable to God. I am responsible to God. I, I, I will give an account of what I do as a pastor when I die and go to heaven. And I would rather God be angry with me than the governor, than the mayor, than the president. I would rather go to prison, go to jail for obeying God than go to hell for disobeying God. And I'm not asking you to follow me, but what I'm saying is I feel right now it's important to open church and because church is essential. And I've been watching this happen for the past four or five months. We can go to Costco and wear masks with 150 people there, and it's okay. We can go to Walmart. We can protest peacefully. We can have riots peacefully. Uh, riots. We can um, do so many things outside of church, but we can't have church. And I have to be a little more bold, and this has been my feeling ever since it started, but I wanted to make sure that, that I was obeying God and not being out of line. But as I've been praying and watching things, I think it's time now to go ahead and move forward and have church and bring in the gathering of the believers. And um, when you guys feel ready to come, if you aren't ready to come, come when you want to. But but obey God, walk in peace, and um, and and if, just 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 make sure that when you do come, you're coming in faith. You're not coming in fear or anxiety or or obligation. And so. COVID is no surprise to God. And when God wrote this 2,000 years ago, he knew COVID would be here. He, he knew there's a possibility for, uh, uh, for COVID. And there have been worse things happened in this world since this was written than COVID. And churches were still open. And so um, as I'm going through my notes here, also Luke 10, 19 says this. Jesus talking is, behold, I've given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability over all the power that the enemy possesses and nothing shall in any way harm you. We've got to take that verse at face value. We have, we have to take what Jesus is saying at face value and say, hey, you know what? Um, I, I know that COVID is out there, but I'm going to walk in faith. And again, you're, I'm not saying that you're not walking in faith if you're quarantining or if you are not coming to church. But what I am saying is that the word is true. The word is truth and we got to obey the word. And um, I, Jerry Campers II, am not going to be held in a negative light by God. And because keep in mind that the abortion clinic in downtown Henderson stayed open the whole time during COVID. Keep in mind that the liquor stores stayed open the whole time and they wanted to close the churches down. So that's where I'm right now. And I'm excited to move forward. And you guys pray and you do what God tells you. Don't do what I say do. You do what God says tells you to do. And we're going to move forward. Um, and I'm excited. Holy hallelujah. And um, everything is great. So you all uh, just keep praying for us. Keep um, being a part of the church process, of the body of Christ process. You keep praying. Stay involved. Stay hooked together. Uh, stay in faith, stay in love, stay in grace, and let God bless you and the body of Christ in every area. We love you guys, and we'll see you all again soon, very, very soon, hopefully at church. And uh, if not, we'll see you online. We love you, and uh, take care, and God bless you all. Bye-bye.